BBC Radio Devon with Yvonne Elliman. If I can't have you, bringing the time to exactly 6.24. Now you and I both know there are loads of great causes that people fundraise for. And the county's local musicians are often the first to get behind many of these. Well tonight in Plymouth there's an event that caught my eye as the beneficiary is, well should we say just a little different to the norm? <laughs> mm. Pat Lucas is the organiser and she's here with me in the studio now. Pat. Hello. Uh, what are you raising money for this evening? African Grey Parrot Rescues. Okay. <laughs> right. Now, you better take us... Let's, let's find out, first of all, why you're interested in African Grey Parrots. Well, they're, they're fantastic creatures. I mean, they have the intelligence of a three- to four-year-old child, for a start. Um, they're just fun birds. You've got and two of them, haven't you? I've got two, yes. I've got Charlie and Penny. And uh, Penny was a rescue. She was, um, she was, people get African grey parrots and they, they see them in a cage, see them talking and they, I want one like that, that's good. What they don't know is that they don't usually talk very well until they're about a year old. So in that year you've got a year's worth of mess, a year's worth of funding, the food, the toys, the destruction. Um, and, you know, they, they get them as a novelty and the novelty wears off. So is this why we need a rescue centre? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Paul and Rick Duncan, who run the website on um, African Grey Parrot Centre, um, they used to breed African Greys, and then they realised there's so many out there that need rescuing and rehoming that it's just a crime to keep breeding them, really. Um, so they stopped breeding and they started rescuing and rehoming. Do you know, you're the so second person we've spoken to in the last couple of hours. We, we had Malcolm from South Hams, the dog warden there, who oh, was right. telling us that the amount of um, dogs that have been abandoned yeah. is on the increase. Are we, is there something going wrong with our society? I think it's the well, economic I we were, climate. I thought we were so animal lovers. Yeah, well, so did I. But I mean, if you could hear some of the horror stories about the birds. You know, one bird in particular that kind of springs to mind um, was hit with a stick because it wouldn't do what it was told. And um, then, you know, they're, they're fed on a rubbish diet. People give it human food. And they, they can't cope with that. Birds can't absorb salt in their bodies. So it's killing them slowly. You may think, oh, you know, a bit of biscuit, no harm. But it builds up, and it builds up, and over the years, and it's gradually kills them slowly, like I say. But, um, yeah, we, we are supposed to be a nation of animal lovers, but I do believe in the economic society that we're in at the moment, the climate that we're in. You know, everybody's tightening their belts, and the first things to go are the ones that are, well, not necessities, really. You know, I mean, to have a bird is an absolute privilege. It's beautiful. They're not cheap, are they? Oh, no. Oh, so, no. so you must have had to think long and hard before you got the bird in the first place? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. what would you pay I mean, I, for an I African paid grey? For my Charlie, I paid £790. See, that's more than a puppy, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I think you do have to be committed. Um, but because there's so many, and so many people want to rehome them, uh, you know, things like that, then, then you could go down the pub and somebody say, oh, I, I fed up with my bird, I don't want it anymore. Give them 100 quid and you've got a bird. You know? Um, I mean, the rehome ones that we do, we only sell them on for, for round about 100 pounds. We actually give them to people um, at the cost that it's taken us, you know, cost us to care for them in the time from rescuing to handing over. Um, so, yeah, you can, if you're rescuing, you can get an African grey quite cheaply. Um, buying them from a breeder, you, you're going to pay a lot more. And then people have the, uh, the misconception, really, that to get a baby African grey is the best thing, and then you bring it up as you want it. And it's not, because they go through the terrible twos. They go through the, the hormonal teenage stage. <laughs> they're, they're terrible, terrible screamers. And, biting and, and you have to train them, you know. So you where did, obviously there's a, an amount of dedication needed here. Where did your yeah. love of African greys stem from? I've always loved birds. 
and um, I've really, I suppose, I've always had budgies and finches and canaries, and I had the money at one time. <laughs> Um, I don't know what it was actually, but I, I found myself with a little bit extra money and I went in the shop and there was Charlie. And there, there's a saying, you know, that African greys actually choose you rather than you choose an African grey. And it was funny, I went into the pet shop, I went in to buy guinea pig food and came out with an African grey. So I sort of passed well, You've it. just done what you've been saying to everybody else, don't do. Buy on a whim, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I did. But I did have a little bit of knowledge and I did, you know, I mean, he's been with us now, he's three years old now and Penny is um, seven, nearly eight, nearly eight years old. And, you know, I love them dearly. Penny hates me, absolutely hates me. She lunges at the bars when I walk past. She would rip the skin off my bones and laugh while she was doing it. She absolutely hates me and I love her to bits. I want to talk some more about how you got involved with the Rescue Centre in just a moment or two. Let's take a little piece of music. And we were saying that, you know, a lot of the local musicians get behind all this sort of fundraising. This isn't somebody who's appearing with you this evening. We're going to cross the Tamer Bridge for these. These are Louis Elliott and the Embers Company. <laughs> BBC Radio Devon playing you Louis, Ed Louis Elliott and the Embers, talented South West group. And I love that track. It's called uh, I Saw Her at the Fair. And it comes from the album Kitto's More, if you want to know more. Just use one of those search engines to find out. They're all over the, the internet. Uh, I'm joined at the moment, this is John Gobi by the way, in for Shep and Joe. I'm joined by Pat Lucas. Now, Pat is the uh, area fundraiser for the African Grey Parrot Rescue Centre. And um, Pat, we were talking, I, I wanted to get on to um, how you sort of joined up with the rescue centre in a moment or two, but during that record, we had a call from Jane who was asking a question of, about African Greys and saying she understands that they shouldn't be kept as a solo pet, they should have company, is that correct? Um, well, as with any, any animal really, I mean we can, we can only do so much for them. Um, we can't substitute their own species, so I would say yes, I would say get a, get a good friend, but you have to think carefully because I've got two and they hate each other. So I can't let them out together. You're two awkward peckers, aren't they? I am. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, they they won't come out together. Um, so that means two big cages, two lots of time out. Um, and if you've got the time, that's that's fair enough. If you're home all day, two lots of expense, two lots of food. You you have to double everything. Time you got a collar and a lead for both of them? <laughs> Do you know, it's funny you should say that. I used to take Charlie out on his harness. Yeah, we used to go out on Dartmoor and around Saltram and things like that. Yeah. We never actually got very far because everybody would stop us and say, Does he talk? <laughs> does yes. he talk? Yes, he does yes, he talk. Does. Oh, okay. yes. Um, if he could talk, what tales would he tell then about you? <laughs> I dread to think. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pat, tell me, because the, the event you're organising this evening, first of mm. all we should say it's at the Voodoo Lounge in Plymouth and there are lots of uh, great local bands mm. playing. Do you want to give a, a name check to one yes. of them? Yes. Well, first of all, we've got on 1001, who are a young band, 14, 15 year old lads. In Tavistock way, aren't they? That's right. Yeah, they've yes. been on my Saturday show. Yeah, yeah, they are fantastic. And as they're getting older, so they're getting more and more professional. You know, they're really good, and uh, I have actually asked them to learn Freebird by Leonard Skinner tonight, so uh, I'll keep them my fingers crossed. I see what you've done there. I see what you've done. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and you've um, got the Eclipse on as well, who have yes, both appeared on BBC Radio Devon and Spotlights. Yes, Eclipse. Uh, I've got a new singer now, though. Oh. Yes, it's Helen Goldsmith now, and uh, she's very, very good, very powerful voice. She's got fantastic. Still Pete Lovett. Um, bless him. So, yes, they're headlining, and in between, we've got a band from Cornwall called Nothing for a Minute, and their singer is Karen Lucas, but no relation to me. And um, they're very, very good as well. And they've all given their time free, which is excellent. But you've arranged all this. Well, no, I, I can't take full credit. Skymind. Skymind have done absolute wonders with the PA and the lighting and a bit of promotion as well. They're, they're really, really good. Yeah, so I'm just 
making the, you know... You're just going to take the there. money at the end of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I, I am actually on well, the door to Well, <laughs> that's what fund, good fundraisers do. You know, well, they get yeah. somebody else to set it up for them and then they take the cash away. They take the money, that's right. How did you get involved? Um, well, basically it was um, because I had Charlie at the time, I went on to the website to try and find out some information. And everybody is so friendly on there, and they welcome new members, and that was it. I just sort of, I've been on there now oh, about three years, and gradually, gradually got more and more involved. And in the end, I said, right, let's do some fundraising and get this show on the road properly. So that's what we did. And, um, yeah, I don't look back. You know, and it's, it is a wonderful site. If anybody's got an African grey, there's always, always problems that crop up. And it would be good to see them on the site. It's um, the it's www.africangreyparrotcentre.co.uk, and just come and join. It's all free, and lots of advice. How much money are you trying to? I mean, how how expensive is it to rehome these birds? To rehome? Because this is this is the the whole point, isn't it? Is well, the rescue yeah. centre? Yeah, um, I mean, at the moment, what we have is coordinators up and down the country, and um, we try and get one that's that's nearest to the parrot that needs to be rehomed, you know. But I mean, we go all over the UK. Um, we don't do Ireland, but we do go Wales and Scotland, um, just picking up rehomes, and then the coordinators look after them until we can find them a forever home. So it depends on the bird, you know, what's, how much. What's it costs. The sort of Longevity, though. Oh, it's going to outlive me, my two. Well. Really? Yeah, definitely. If they don't eat you first. Well, that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, roughly 60, 70 years. Wow. So, so you, you really know. are taking on equipment. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And it's like having a permanent toddler in the house. Pat, thank you very much for joining us on the programme. I know you're, you're welcome off to uh, the fundraising event now. Do you want to just give us finally the details once again? Yes, it's that the Voodoo Lounge in Plymouth tonight. Doors open at half past eight. Five pound entry fee, and that includes a raffle ticket. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck, and thanks Thank for Thank you very us. much indeed.